There we go. Uh, Jim Howard here in Fort Worth, Texas. Today's date, it is November 18th of 2016. And I'm in my, my grandson moved out, moved into his own apartment. He got an advancement where he was working and but they moved him to a new store, or not a new store, but a different store for him. So this was his room. He moved out. And I've got an extra room here, so I'm going to I've put my old computer in here. This has got, uh, I just installed Ubuntu Studio, which um, it's Linux. They when you install it, you get everything that a producer or uh, somebody who makes videos or images or word process, all that stuff is supposed to be already in here. Of course, I'm sure there's some things that are missing. I just, I used it in the past a little bit, but I just installed the new version, so I'll have to go in and make sure everything is working the way it should. Uh, Still got a lot of work to do in this room. When my grandson was uh, in here, he just had computer stuff everywhere and stacks of paper everywhere. And you couldn't get in. He didn't let us in to vacuum or, you know, he didn't vacuum and he didn't let us in to vacuum or anything. So I've worked on the room, but I over haven't got into his closet area yet. He took out the stuff that he wanted. He left a tremendous amount of junk, so I've got to go in there and straighten it out. Let me, I guess, show you the room. Turn my viewfinder around here so I can see what you see. This is my uh, Panasonic FZ. 300 and I really uh, I made a very short video I think with it or two We're coming up on the closet here yeah there you go uh, I've got a lot of work to do in that little closet there I just drug this big old chair in here I need to get it cleared off so uh, let me flip this around here. Uh, oops. I shouldn't turn around like that. Um, the FZ300 camera I just got it not long ago. Made a video or two. And then I went in and it has, it has more... It has a tremendous number of adjustments, things that you can do to adjust settings to get all types of performance that you want out of the camera, which is way over my head, but I'll have to try to learn them. But then all of a sudden I started making videos and what the heck's going on? And uh, I realized just this morning, just a little bit ago, that I had gone into the settings and there's a thing called Snap photo, I think it is, or snap video, snap video, I think, and there's some settings in there that you can take it so that when you press the record button, it records for how long you want it to record, and the starting thing is four seconds, and it goes, you know, on up in time. I had set it to four seconds, <laughs> so I'd take a video, and what, is this thing running or not? Why did it, you know? So now I have it set, hopefully, correctly. Uh, wanted to talk about a little bit about politics. So this is a this would be a good point for a bunch of people just to bail out. I bet you. See if I can zoom in here a little bit. There we go. One of the videos I made on election day was I voted for. Whoops. 
Well, at least thanks I've got a viewfinder there on the front. I can... The video I made you may have seen was I voted uh, for Hillary uh, Clinton. And I said in the video that, you know, she was going to, it was in the morning, I voted as soon as they opened. And I, I think I said in there that, you know, next president of the United States, <laughs> bang, wow, was I surprised, was everybody surprised. Uh, what I want to talk about now was, because, you know, it's been every day in the news, Trump this, Trump that, picking his people, and on and on. But there was some discussion, some mention made of fake news, and that's that, that's something that I, I just that's what I want to comment on. So it really shouldn't be partisan at all. Although Donald Trump, man, I mean President-elect Donald Trump, he's somebody that. He would say these outrageous, some outrageous things, uh, you know, like 90% uh, of uh, white people who are killed are killed by black people. And then I, I saw the a clip where a news reporter or whatever was, you know, sir, uh, Mr. Trump, that's not correct. And Donald Trump said, yes, it is. And it, sir, no, it's not. It's 15%. And... Uh, he said, well, all I know is what I see on the internet or what I saw on the internet. And he did, but other things like that that he did, but most politicians, I, th I think, don't do that. But fake news I've always hated, and there's some talk of trying to fix it, but I'm not sure with the internet the way it is that you can, that you can fix it. Um, back a long time ago, I was working hospital security and I went in to research Belton Hospital to go to work that night and went into the nurse ER doctor, you know, their break room there or whatever, and there was this notice on the bulletin board there. Warning, read this, important, pass this information on. As soon as I saw that, that's like one of the warning signs. When you get an email that says, Ah, oh, pass this on. Pass this on to everybody you know. It's important, you know, usually. Warning. Warning. You know, don't pass it on and, or unless you check it out. And it said that a uh, man down in New Orleans gave his name, I think, uh, went out for some drinks, and he went up to his room with a fine young lady, and then he passed out. When he woke up, he was in a bathtub filled with ice, and there was a telephone there next to him with a note saying, you need to call 911. Uh, we have harvested your liver or, I don't know, kidney or something. And I read that and I said, why did you post this? Well, you know, the, that, and that, that information, people need to be aware. I said, this is fake, totally fake. It, you, can, you can tell by, by just looking at it, you can tell by the the way it's worded, the, the detail they give, it's everything, it's fake, total. Uh, so I, I turned to the ER doctor, I said, doctor, you don't believe this, do you? Well, it could be, and I said, and this is actually before we found out that they probably were, I said, maybe in some third world country, uh, something like, you know, might happen, you know, but not in the United States, not in New Orleans, not, you know. So I went home and looked it up, and sure enough, you know, the people, this had, had been out years before, and every day the New Orleans Police Department got calls. They had, you know, you know, they had a note, I guess, there for their people that answered, take, refer this call to whatever. No, never happened here. Uh, no, you know, blah, blah, blah. And that was, uh, that was one. I had a a guy I worked with at the same hospital, a young man, very bright, uh, graduate of uh, KU, Kansas University, and you know he didn't have a degree. One of these, he had a degree in chemistry or something, something you know, difficult. 
uh, and uh, it was actually, well, I, had, I actually had quit, retired, and he sent me this email. Well, he made a mistake. He sent it to me and to a whole bunch of other people, and he, he sent it where I could see who he had sent it to. And normally, I wouldn't have done what I did. But anyway, it said that in Kansas, I think it was, that black UN helicopters had been practicing, uh, military forces, UN forces, had been practicing for uh, rounding up Americans or something rather in this small, name the town, date, everything, and uh, said that they came into town and they shot the town up with, you know, live rounds of ammunition. So, of course, I knew, I mean, that would have been, you know, that, it's crazy. Everything about it was also, you know, passes on, passes on, all this kind of crap. I actually went to the local town's local newspaper and, you know, online and looked up the date and the time, and, you know, and then I emailed to everybody, you know, to the guy who sent it to me, Brad, and everybody he sent it to, that it was stupid and incorrect and untrue or whatever. So that's, that's a kind of, but now we've gotten, we've progressed with fake news and I saw one and I just, just recently and they mentioned that, that's when they mentioned, I was on the internet someplace looking around and I saw it said that uh, the Pope had endorsed Donald Trump. Oh my God, I, you know. A news story, you know, a news story, Pope endorses, you know, and of course I, knew, I didn't even bother to check on that. The Pope did not endorse Donald Trump. What was the other one? Uh, it was again something people were putting out who were Trump supporters to, you know, and it, it was another one like that, fake stories, and the people are passing those things around, well, Facebook, I guess, now is wondering about how can we, because uh, I think 40% of Americans, they, they get their news from Facebook. My God, my God help us. Uh, so Facebook is kind of looking, what can we do to you know, prevent this kind of stuff? So I don't know what, well, the only thing is, I mean, there's something wrong with our educational system that people should be able to look at some of these stories. I remember there was a shopping mall, and I lived in Kansas City, Missouri, Bannister Mall, and I don't know if it was ever in print, but there was, people were saying, oh, be careful if you go to Bannister Mall. There are, there are guys who are lying underneath cars, and when a woman comes up, they cut the tendon on her foot, and then she falls down, and then I forget what the rest of the story was, whether they just took her purse, or whether they raped her, or whatever. No, no, no. You know, and actually that mall eventually closed. Um, and I knew a police officer, I actually worked at that mall for when they first opened. I got hired as an as a um, trainee, manager trainee for a Radio Shack store. Uh, but uh, there was all types of uh, stories going around. Well, oh, this police officer, Belton police officer came in and he was visiting it at the research Belton Hospital ER with us and talking and everything. He said, well, my wife wants to go up to Bannister Mall and do some shopping, and I I won't let her go up there alone. I, I go up, you know, I'm armed. I go up there with her armed to that mall. So those things really, I'm not sure that put the mall out of business, but uh, you know, the first line of defense is we should be smart enough there's something we're lacking when we we're training, when we're educating children. And I don't know what it is because I'm not smart enough to know. I hope that 
people that have degrees in education or teaching or something would know. And I would, of course, the problem with school boards is they're elected on a local basis and it's very political. Religious people and right wing people get the, you know, try to get elected and usually probably do get elected to the school boards so they can control the agenda, so they can keep out stuff that they don't like. And that's, that's bad. I, I don't know what we do about that, but there should be some type of education that you give so that people can read something and understand it and see if there's material there that doesn't make sense or actually it's going to sound like I'm bragging and believe me I'm not because I'm just average and IQ and bad in some subjects, really bad in some subjects. In the junior, I don't know if they still do it or not, in the junior year of high school, I'm 75 years old, there was a thing called the National, I probably got it wrong, Scholastic Scholarship or something and every junior in the United States on that same day or whatever would take this test. And I got the, anyway, they came out, that's before, that'd be like 1958. I mean, there were computers, but we didn't have computers in our home yet. And I got, we all, you know, we all get this printout, man, multi-page, with a graph and all kinds of lines and everything. And so I look at it and I say, oh, just slightly above average. And okay, I, I, that's what I knew, you know. And then I saw, oh, shit. 90% of the, it told for your school, for the United States and all kinds of, you know, 90% of the juniors in high school across the United States are better at mathematics than I am. Oh my God. Uh, that's really bad. Oh. Then I saw this line that went up or whatever and it, it was, uh, at the top and it was, I was better, I was in the top 10% or 5% in reading ability, but they said in there, they said in their ability to read and comprehend what you read and I forget exactly how they had it worded, but it, it was to see what, what is true or not by, by reading the material and by using whatever you use in your brain to do that, I thought, well, wow, you know, I'm, I'm at the top of the scale on something. So that, I'm sure that, that people, you know, some people can sing, some people can do artwork, some people uh, can do mathematics. And what, I mean, some people have a talent for that when they come into the world. Some people develop it you know, and get gets better. Uh, so I think when I was born for some reason, you know, important brain cells were not developed maybe where they should have been for geometry and trigonometry and, you know, okay, basic math, you know. Uh, but then some others, but, but also that should be something that, that can be taught. And I think that's in the ancient times, Aristotle and Plato and I think whatever type of debating that they did and arguing that they did and that type of stuff must have, I'm not suggesting in school that we, you know, teach everybody Greek or something, but that needs to be developed. Then when you move, of course that takes a if, if they started doing it, which they're not going to, uh, then you move on to, you know, what can we do? And I think that's, it's incumbent upon us to, of course the problem is that I started a computer bulletin board in 1982. And at that time I was like the third bulletin board system in the Kansas City area. And many after came and tremendous numbers of those uh, contacted me and I helped them and 
encouraged them and other people who were running computer bulletin board systems didn't help them, didn't want to encourage competition or whatever, and I did. Uh, but I think what uh, has to happen, well, what happened, I set up my computer bulletin board system and <clears throat> I had to write the first program in BASIC, the, the BBS program, I had to write it myself in BASIC. Uh, and then eventually somebody wrote one for me. And then after that, somebody who knew computer programming, after that I thought, no, I'm, never, I'm going to pay people, I'm going to buy programs. Uh, but, so my computer bulletin board system had a lot of things going on with it. <clears throat> but there was discussion. And so, and it was the same discussions that we're having now with the same discussion. Okay, timed out on me. I don't, I'm going to talk. I can't see what how much time was used. I'm guessing 30 minutes. Well, what I was going to say, I'll do this real quick and then end this. But I have to. But I have to splice these together. That make extra work. I didn't want to do that. So what I did with my computer bulletin board system was on the subject of gun control, pro information on gun control. Next to it, people who wanted, you know, gun control, a statement there and information there. It was on abortion, gun control. Uh, of course, one that was a little bit, you know, best hamburger place. What other subjects? Uh, so I gave both sides. In 1995, when the World Wide Web was invented, and I moved my computer bulletin board system <clears throat> to become, you know, a, a blog, or it was a blog back in 1982, but when I moved it to the World Wide Web, I didn't bother to put both sides. I just talked about what was, what I'm interested in, and my point of view, and that type of stuff. There wasn't any reason to, for me to try to present other points of view, because there's hundreds, thousands, millions of websites and places you can go to get that other information. But then what I discovered and everybody else has discovered is that uh, if you're a, a gun enthusiast, you're going to go to the gun enthusiast websites and you're not fucking going to go to any site that gives you any point of view that is different. You're not going to go and check it out. Uh, if you are pro-life, you're going to go to the religious pro-life places, and you're not going to go to Planned Parenthood and check out what they're saying, or to see their point of view. Uh, now, I'm not saying if you are, let's say, if you're a right-wing, you know, Republican, I'm not saying that you should go to that you go to red state that you go to redstate.com and you go to I don't know what are the other you know let's say you go to ten right wing Republican sites you know and you that's where you get your news and that whatever I'm not saying you should go to ten you know, Americans for Democratic Action and uh, whatever the left wing. I'm not saying you should go to 10 of those, but you ought to go over and look around a little bit and see what's being said, what what's their point of view, whatever, you know. And that's not happening. And that's, that's the problem that we've got. Uh, when I was working at Research Belton Hospital or whatever, I was the only liberal Democrat there. I think I was the only Democrat there. They would wait for me. But if it was big news uh, or whatever, they would wait for me to come in and say, we've been waiting for you. What do you think about the Rodney King rioting? What do you think about, the, you know, what do you think about this? What do you think about that? But when I was working there, I would just be 
I'd see so I'd seen something on the news or whatever about, and it wasn't political or whatever. I had, and I'd say, oh, did you guy, did you see uh, a story about such and such? And it would be like uh, they'd say, where did you see that? And I said, well, I don't, I don't remember. I go to a bunch of sites. I don't. Hey, well, where did you see that? And I said, I think it was probably on CNN. CNN. That's a bunch of lies. That's liberal. We don't, we don't watch, you know, CNN. So you couldn't even, you know. So uh, I actually, I blog about, well, I'm doing it less and less because I fucking hate it. Uh, with my blog over the years, there's times if you were to tune in to it, I'd be talking about my personal life, my divorce, my ex-wife, my kids, uh, or I might be talking about my job and I would post a, a grievance, it would be the entire grievance I would post on there, say I'm submitting this to my to human resources tomorrow, I'm doing a grievance, and then I would post what the results were. and so. It's not one issue that I, you know, that I cover, but uh, I don't know what the solution is because if if everybody just goes, if let's take political, if you just take political and you just go to those sites that support you and everything, well, that's too. Of course, that's the problem because you've got some of these sites totally make up news. And the people, smart people, Republican, let's take the ones that do it on the re Republican side or whatever. I mean, they totally, you know, it is a known fact, it's been reported by scientists that Hillary Clinton is a space alien from the planet Zua. Or, you know, I mean, crazy stuff. And people go there and it's there and they accept it. We've got to, to, we have freedom of the press here, so you can't say that, but something needs to be done. What I was surprised about, which I don't want to go on too long, what surprised the hell out of me back when uh, Obama, uh, I'm not sure if it was his first when he first ran, or if it was his second, when he ran for re-election. But Fox News was putting out, Fox News, by the way, is, it's not really a news, it's a, it's a front group for the Republican Party or for the right, right wing. You can't, sure, go there and see, because you'll like some of the stuff they're doing. And if you really hate uh, Clinton or somebody, they're going to say nasty, mean things about him, and that's going to, you're going to, yeah, right, you know. You don't want to go, if you hate Bill Clinton or Hillary Clinton or Barack Obama or somebody, you're not going to want to go to some site that's saying they walk on water and are blessed and anointed by, you know. But, but what surprised me was, and I didn't realize that, you know, Fox News was saying that uh, Romney, was it Romney? That uh, Romney is going to win and on and on about that. Well then, of course, when Romney's losing, the commentators and the people at Fox News are as, they're as shocked and surprised I thought they were just lying. I thought they were just stupid. They actually believed their own their own crap that they were putting out. They believed it. Uh, if if they had been looking at other material, that's like uh, Vice President under Bush. Uh, I want to say Gorbachev. No, not Gorbachev. The guy with the artificial heart. It's kind of appropriate, isn't it? They were talking about, I said it was a news article. You may not want to believe it because it was on CNN, probably. There was a report and it talked about when the different politicians or 
people who are trying to become politicians or whatever, when they go out on speaking arrangements like Sarah Palin or whatever, they talk about not as Republican, but anybody they could get information on. What they wanted, you know, they, how much money they wanted, whether a limo had to pick them up, if there'd be a certain kind of a limo, if they had certain had to have certain food in the refrigerator, whatever. And Ch Law Cheney, that's it, Vice President Cheney. And he demanded <laughs> that all television sets be tuned to Fox News and only Fox News. And I thought that was kind of funny, but it stupid also. Uh, so we've got problems in, what is it, River City? There's pool tables in River City. I don't think that was it. But I don't know how the problem's going to be solved, but right now there is some discussion about what you do, how you handle fake news. We got to be careful of not getting into the thing of censorship. But on the other hand, it's really bad for our nation if fake news is put out and if people believe it and if they pass it on to other people who are gullible and believe it. You know, this is a democracy. Okay, I'm sorry, you're a Republican. No, Jim, this is not a democracy. It is a republic. Yes, I know we have a republican form of government, but the United States is also a democracy. And actually there are some uh, states on the east coast of the United States where there are town hall meetings and things like that are uh, actually democracies where the people meet in the town hall and uh, they decide things. So don't fucking shit your pants. Yes, I understand we have a Republican form of government, but the United States is also a democracy. So, because it's a democracy, because the people, you know, they may not individually open up their window and scream out the window, I want sales tax decreased by 2% or whatever. It's a democracy, you know, where we elect representatives to represent us and make those decisions. It's still really important that we be an informed electorate. And by the way, I don't think in this last election we had an informed electorate. And that's scary. Although I think, on the one hand, people on my side, politically, look at these other people and think, my God, how fucking stupid can you be electing somebody like Donald Trump? My God, are you brain dead? What in the, you know? On the other hand, I think a lot of people are just so fed up with the government that they think, I'm going to elect somebody who's going to shake things up. Sort of like with Ross Perot. And I was, I, back when Ross Perot ran, I, could, I, w I wouldn't have voted for him, but I could, I could sort of understand, yeah, let's send somebody there who is going to go in and just raise hell, even though he can't do what he thinks he can do, which is the same with Donald Trump. Donald Trump really does not understand the system. Well, he understands part of this and how to get money out of this system, how to avoid paying taxes and stuff like that. But uh, it's kind of scary. But on the other hand, this is a republic, and there are three branches of government, and he's going to find out, and his supporters are going to find out that there's a lot that he can't do. Because our founding fathers were really smart, you know. Separation of powers, uh, three branches of government, checks and balances. That's another thing where I, the Republicans, I think, have really just don't understand our system. Two, the way Congress was set up and the way everything, it was to be 
things were to be worked out, things were to be negotiated, and things were to be, uh, deals were to be made. And the Republicans, more and more, got where the idea of uh, making a deal, uh, giving something away or whatever, was just, no, no deal, no concessions, no... And, and that's the way the system was designed to work. If you're going to have that mentality, then we need to change our system of government. Anyway, I've talked on long enough. I think most of you probably, hopefully, bailed out a while back. Now i got to splice these two together. I don't want to work. I'm retired. <laughs>